Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. It's a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, welcome back to God's Playbook. Today we talk about the holy innocence. And it's not innocence, E-N-C-E. It's innocence, I-N-N-O-C-E-N-T-S. These are the young children who lost their lives because of King Herod's jealousy of this newborn king. So interesting, we go from Christmas Day on the 25th to the martyrdom of Stephen on 26th to the Feast of John the Apostle 27 and now the Holy Innocent 28th. You may think this is a whirlwind of all over the place in reference to time. But again, friends, we have to understand that this is not a chronological thing. This is called life and how God touches us through all the ups and downs of life, period. So let's talk about the holy innocence. We know that in St. Matthew's Gospel, we hear of this encounter where King Herod has been told by the three magi about seeing the star, and that they are to come to worship the new king. His jealousy goes through the roof. And so he makes the very terrible decision to attack all children two years old and younger, male. The female children don't need to be uh, concerned to him because they will never be king. But we see Herod, in all of his power, that his power corrupts him, changes his mindset from rational to irrational. Think and ask yourself the question, why would he have two-year-olds executed if it was just born, right? They wouldn't be eligible. And yet he has to make absolute sure that he gets rid of any potential threat to himself, We know that the angel prepared Joseph and Mary for this massacre from King Herod and to protect the child Jesus by fleeing to Egypt. As Mary and Joseph do this with great fear and trembling, they recognize that God the Father is protecting them and will continue to protect the Holy Family from every evil attack. This reminds us, too, that we need God's help to be protected from every evil attack in our own lives. The devil is real and has power. The devil motivates people to go against God's commandment to love God and neighbor and to make decisions that are anything but holy and righteous. When people choose violence, when people use foul language, when people tear others down by what they say and do, These are all examples of how evil can be at work. And so we need God's protection. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have an angel appear to us and tell us what to do. Having said that, we need to have the faith of Mary and Joseph to realize that even though they found themselves in yet again another difficult situation by now being asked to flee to Egypt, because, of course, there were no airplanes, there were no automobiles, And all of you who've just had a child, what's your energy level like? To ask Mary shortly after delivering the child Jesus to now go on this long journey. What happens if bandits attack the the family? What if they try to steal Jesus away, seeing it's a male child? What if Mary gets sick? What if the baby needs something? Do we often think about the fleeing to Egypt and the impact? So Mary and Joseph always had faith in God, that God would deliver them and that God was fighting for them. But what about these little children? So the church calls them the holy innocents. And so this day is now three days after the birth of Jesus within the octave of Christmas. We give praise to God for these lives who never knew the Lord. And yet their blood was spilled for the sake of his name. And so our church teaches that all of them, of course, would be delivered by God and 
are in heaven as a result of their sacrifice. And so as the church celebrates this, this feast points us to Jesus as the Messiah, and it also foreshadows the opposition that Jesus will face as he moves forward. While he is the King of Kings, King Herod and others will be threatened by him. While he is the Messiah and our Savior, others will suggest that he is not. While he has come to deliver us by his word and his very actions, the miracles, the healings, the teachings, others will reject him. This feast is a precursor of that truth. And so let us praise God who continues to fight not only for the Holy Family, but for each one of you, friends, as his precious daughter or son. God wants to protect you from the evil one. And that's why Jesus calls us to pray the Lord's Prayer every day. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I cannot be delivered from evil on my own. If I think I can combat evil, I'm going to lose. The devil is much stronger than me. But the devil is nowhere close to being even in the ballpark, to use a sports analogy, from God. So we have nothing to fear. We need to be aware, but we must not fear. So let's ask through the intercession of the Holy Innocents to intercede for us and to help us to deepen our relationship with God as well. We continue this octave of Christmas. So Merry Christmas, friends. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Budsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.